Learn that simple song as a child growing up. How many of you were also taught the golden rule to treat people the way that you want to be treated? Contest master, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests. I grew up in Jackson, Mississippi during the segregated 60s. And I was often confused and perplexed by what my parents and elders said and did on Sunday mm -hmm. and what they said and did the remainder of the week. In 1969, America sent a man to the moon and returned him safely to Earth. But in Jackson, Mississippi, white children and black children could not attend the same school. This confused me, and I wanted to ask, Hey, Daddy, if, if Jesus says we're supposed to love one another, then why are you and the other parents so mad about the little black kids going to school with me? But I was just a child. You're too young. You won't understand. I did not have the courage, so I did not ask. But there was one person who would have the courage to stand up and show me the true meaning of the Golden Rule. In 1970, Mississippi was forced to integrate the public school system. I remember the first days of school, the white parents standing outside the school in protest. I remember the vivid image of my Sunday school teacher standing there with both his young sons by the hand, screaming at the little kids getting off the bus. Get your butt back on that bus! You don't belong up in here! In October of 1970, the protest outside of the school had faded away. But the mistreatment and the indifference in the school remained. In October of 1970, my grandfather passed away. My grandfather lived in a very different world than I did. He was from East Mississippi, a small farming community. He was a mason, a respected member of his community. Everyone called him Mr. Bud. He was never anything more than just a dirt poor farmer his entire life. As he grew older, he was unable to do the little odd jobs around the house to keep the home in good repair. Mr. Plez was an area handyman who would come by and do those little odd jobs for my papa, and papa would scrape together what little money he had so he could pay Mr. Plez for his work. Mr. Plez was not much younger than my papa, and as time went by, Mr. Plez's son would do most of the work while papa and Mr. Plez would spend their time under the shade of those chocolate trees. <laughs> Papa was a quiet man by nature. But when Mr. Fred would come by, he would come alive with excitement, pick up his chew in the back of his dominoes, and make a beeline for those chocolate trees. <laughs> oh, under the shade of those trees, they would regale each other with tall tales of their adventures when they were younger men. Stories about the fish they caught, and the ones that got away. <laughs> Stories about the women they loved and the ones that got away. <laughs> On the day of Papa's funeral, family and friends gathered in a small whitewashed church in Collinsville, Mississippi. Before the service began, a murmur rose up out of the back of that congregation and then rolled forward like a tide away. I looked back in there, in the back of that church, I saw one lone figure. He was wearing his Sunday best suit. His head bowed, his back in his hand. I could tell. By the looks on some of my family's faces, they did not approve of him being there. And in a moment, the instant, I saw a flash of that Sunday school teacher in my mind. But before anyone could say or do anything, my grandmother rose up. She turned, lifted that sweet, pure face face. She choked back the grief in her voice. And she spoke in words that were loud and clear and heard by everyone there. Hey, you come on down here, you sit beside me. 
making his way to the front of the church. He stopped at my grandmother and he said, Miss Phillips, I just wanted to come by today and say goodbye to Mr. Bunn. He said, Claire, you were his true friend. Please step beside me and let me say this before the Lord will say goodbye to you. And they did. In October 1970, my grandmother taught me the true meaning of the golden rule. She stood in the face of adversity to do so. Over the years, I've learned to appreciate that while government can create laws and programs to level the playing field, they cannot change what is in the heart of man. In order to change what is in the heart of man, it takes one person willing to stand up and do the right thing. This morning, I stood on sacred ground, and I looked at that balcony at the Lorraine Motel, and I meditated on the words of Dr. King, the time is right to do right. In America today, our country cries out for leaders willing to stand up and do the right thing. It is my hope for each of you today that regardless of the challenges you face, the obstacles you need to overcome, the mountaintop you're trying to climb, you will have the courage to stand up and do the right thing. Looking back, I say, Mamma, I was watching you that day. And I learned the true meaning of the golden rule. Now I know we're all precious in his life. And we need to treat each other the same way. Talk that's not.